We're on. Hey, oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. We are live. Um, so I am so sorry about last week and, um, you know, the computer just, it crashed. And uh, hopefully that will not happen this time. I have, um, you know, turned everything off. I restarted the computer, you know, did all the things. So I am hopeful that um, that was all that was necessary. So anyway, we are having a delightful conversation today about how to recover from a sugar binge. Gotten a lot of questions about this and I thought it was a good topic to cover. So as I said in the description, you know, this has happened to the best of us. You know, we have been, um, you know, out and about and unprepared. Um, we got hungry, um, you know, food was offered. We had food pushers, you know, we were at, you know, let's say a family event um, and it came to pass or we said we were just going to have a bite and then, you know, three pounds of cake later, you know, <laughs> just, uh, yeah. So as you could see from the icons that I put on um, the thumbnail, um, the outcome of those sorts of um, sugar crashes can be pretty rough. Um, how about, you know, what was your experience, Arian? What, what has one of those sugar binges been like for you? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's been exactly like the icon. Like, I've had this, like, the cramps, um, the bad time in the bathroom, um, the feeling really bad and just off the next day. Like um, one person, one of our uh, seedless says, uh, it's not feeling as vibrant. Mm -hmm. And when you're used to feeling good and then all of a sudden you go back to what, you, what was your normal from mm -hmm. years ago, um, that hurts. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been, um, when I do it, it's like, oh, it's, I wake up the next day knowing like, not only did you eat sugar yesterday, you ate way too much and your body's going to punish you for it for at least yeah. the next like 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, for me, it's way longer than 12 hours. So like the first day is going to be, you know, bathroom troubles. Um, I'm going to be um, inflamed and bloated. That's the first thing that happens to me. So, um, you know, and all the places where I feel where I get inflamed get worse. So my lungs, you know, my skin, like all the places where are my natural weaknesses, those places get worse. And then um, I'm also, and of course, allergies. I'm going to be a runny nose, blowing my nose, sneezing, and all of that absolutely going to be happening. Um, mm. So, and that's that probably goes on for 24 hours if I get right back on track. If I don't, <laughs> which I, you know, I might not. Because when you're feeling that bad, it's just kind of like, well, you know, it's one more day. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, it does take a like, while. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's always like you do it. And then like, even in feeling bad, you now have the sugar in your system and it's calling for more sugar. It's calling mm -hmm. for reinforcements as soon as it's in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. And so I'll feel bad. And, you know, the first thing that happens to me is like, I forget how, how much energy and how great I feel all the time. So, you know, I walk around like not being tired and, or even if I've been doing a lot, you know, I still feel, I feel fine. I don't feel tired, but I have that sugar and it's like, boom, you know, I crash hard and it's not, it's not just the sugar crash. It's like that incredible energy that we all talk about on keto and on carnivore is just instantly gone. And so I feel like my 48 or 49 year old self. Um, I don't, I don't feel, you know, young and vibrant and healthy anymore. So that's like the first thing that I notice. And I'll also, um, like I can actually, I feel like I can literally feel my blood sugar fluctuating 
I can feel it dropping and I get that shaky jittery feeling where I'm like, Oh my God, I have to have a little more sugar now just to bring things up to normal. Um, so that definitely happens to me. And so that's happening like in the first, um, you know, the first six hours, like that kind of thing is going on. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like all that happens to me. I get some of that, but <laughs> yeah, not so that really, much you don't feel your severe. blood sugar. You don't feel like your blood sugar is like fluctuating. You don't feel that. No. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, this could be a sign I, that I have pre-diabetes that is controlled with my diet. But like when I'm off of it, it probably, you know, that's, that could be what's going on is that if I were just eating a standard American diet, I absolutely would have diabetes right now. Yeah, I wonder. Because that crash is the hypoglycemia. So that's like this like strong insulin response that, like you said, like just whams your blood sugar down. And then mm -hmm. um, you feel all the negative feelings of that. Like now you're hypoglycemic. And mm -hmm. yeah, I imagine if that's happening, I guess. So there are some people who talk about like this metabolic flexibility and they say like, well, you're really healed when you can do that. Uh, I don't want to get off into that discussion about what I guess like the definition of healing is or when are you really healed, but it definitely sounds like <laughs> I'm not healed. It, it, <laughs> I'm not healed. It, it, I was going to, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I, think I was going to say exactly it definitely seems what... like there are, there are different responses to I, the sugar I'm clearly and some not are more healed. severe. <laughs> But I think that that's exactly, I I'm probably exactly right. If I had not switched to eating this way, I would be currently diabetic. And I, yeah. I mean, I probably am. So, you know, so that happens when I have, like, that doesn't happen, like, with a stick of chewing gum. But it happens, mm. like, with, you know, two, two big slices of cake. <laughs> okay, what's and a big slice? Sometimes. How big is the fat end of a big slice? It's pretty big, you know, like that big. Okay, two of those. Yeah, and for me, if I had two pieces like that, I would get um, all the digestive distress. Um, and then I'd probably be... I feel like I was okay afterwards, but rebuilding back to good. Mm -hmm. yeah. As opposed to like still bad and yeah. I'm going to be bad for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I see Katora says that, um, looking at, she feels the blood sugar drops as well. And looking at her blood work from three years ago, she was definitely on track to being diabetic. Um, mm. Johnny G writes sugar coma. Um, I think yeah. he's joking, but I literally feel that way. And, and it gets a little scary. It's kind of like, oh my God, um, I, I actually have to eat some more sugar just to even this out because I, I think I might go into a coma. Um, mm. That's, you know, it's pretty scary. Um, yeah, I think so, sugar coma is exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And Joe asks if I get that from a little sugar or am I generally binging on it? So yeah, it's not, this is not an M&M. &M. Um, so, yeah, I guess you could yeah. say I'm binging on it. Um, <laughs> and Joe does, says he can definitely feel the um, energy decrease for sure if he eats um, more Italian for a bit. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that means pasta or cannolis, but um, either way, <laughs> yum. <laughs> right, but uh, definitely would cause the issues. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. me, it's it's more than a little bit of sugar. It has to really be a binge. Um, not just like one indiscretion, but like two or three all at the same time. I mean, but why wouldn't you do two or three? I mean, if you do one, you may as well do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the damage is done, so you might as well just dive right in. <laughs> No, for me, there's a difference. If it's just one, if it's like one piece of cake versus two or three, um, and especially mm -hmm. big slices of cake. Me normally, like if I'm at my parents' house and I have uh, dessert with dinner, 
it's going to be a like that like piece of cake we were talking about. It's going to be about half of that. And oh, okay. All right. It's just enough to taste it. I've enjoyed it, and then I'm done. If I did a bunch of those, or especially the big pieces, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Then I'm gonna feel. I mean, you know, it, so I've already said, I've said many times, I am clearly a sugar addict. So you know, there's no, there's no small amount of sugar. You know, it's just mm. the beginning of the bigger amount, and um, you know, it just it doesn't end there. So. Uh, if you're like me, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to be super super careful. And in fact, um, so this is exciting. The woman that I worked with to help me deal with my sugar addiction and um, who really turned helped turn things around for me, um, I'm gonna be interviewing her on um, the 18th. I'm really um, excited about that. So I will be. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'll be bringing that interview um, to the channel very soon. And I'm happy to announce that I am at 203 days of no sweet tastes. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And 110 days of no coffee. <laughs> wow. 110 I know. already? I know. Where's the time gone? Right? 110. I feel like I was just making fun of you for leaving me out by you myself are. with the coffee thing like a month ago. Yeah. Well, and rightfully days. so. I, you know, I did flake out on you, but I, I came through. In the end, I came through. I came through strong and hard. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Joe. Brava. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Let's see, Katora had scallops the other day and tasted the sweetness. Yes, carnivore candy that I spoke of. Yes, yes. Okay, good. I am so glad that um, I am not the only one. Yeah, I think that, car that scallops taste like candy. So, yum. Um, that might be why they're the ones I like the most. Yeah, sure. <laughs> For everyone. Mm. I mean, crab and lobster are also sweet, but not quite as sweet. Um, but I'm, I'm still delighted with those too. Yeah. Um, anyway, so to get back to uh, what happens. So, you know, so for me, the, that's what happens when I go crazy with, um, you know, eating, uh, you know, on, on a cheat day or on a binge. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't had one in uh, anything um, in 203 days. And it's really, um, it's really nice to not you know, to not feel that. So I, I really do intend to keep going and not have any more, not have any more days off. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, so for me, it was more like the blood sugar thing, the energy thing, and then all of the, you know, all of the conditions that were improved with carnivore come crashing back. Like, you know, um, all of the inflammation, all of the allergies, eczema, everything. So, so those are, that's my experience. And you said, it seems like it's more mild for you, Arian, like it, things are over within a couple days. Yeah. Uh, if that, it kind of feels like, mm -hmm. mm, no, a couple days to, to get back to normal a couple days. Um, mm -hmm. but like the severe symptoms, the stuff that's like really bad versus just like, I don't feel as good as I used to yeah. that stuff lasts maybe maybe total 24 hours depending on when i eat it because it's like i'm going to eat it and then i'm going to have that time in the bathroom and then sometime after that i'm going to get back to normal um or close to normal so mm -hmm. yeah it might be about 24 hours at the most uh-huh man lucky you <laughs> so even if i get right back into it it's like it's a I, you know, I feel like it's almost a couple of weeks before, like, I'm back to smooth sailing. Um, really? Yeah. Like, I will, I'll feel better. I mean, I'm not going to feel bad, but I don't feel, like, at my tip-top normal, sh you know, shape. I will, I will have way more cravings all the time, so that's going to be a constant problem. And um, I'm not going to be... Yeah, it just, it kind of takes a couple of weeks to get right back into my stride. 
So that's something to think about, you know, depending on how long it takes you to get back, you know, get your, get your group back. Um, you know, it's a big deal. Having a cheat day is a big deal. And that explains why. So I thought everybody was kind of like me and maybe the only difference would be that folks like feel, uh, cravings more than I do. So I was wondering why some carnivores are like absolutely so against ever having sugar. Like they can count on one hand the number of times in the last like five years they've had something sweet. And it was like, oh, you know, my daughter had a birthday party and this one time I had a piece of cake or something. But like that was three years ago. I haven't done it since then. Nothing sweet. Now I understand because if I was going through all that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. I would just... Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no sugar, period. Yeah, yeah. Um, Johnny G says he gets uh, tennis elbow if he eats sugar. Yeah. What's, so I think, what's tennis elbow? It, well, I think it's inflammation in your elbow, like tendonitis. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he said everything uh, rings true for him. So that I said. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I think for some people, like everything that's gone bad has just, you know, just flares right up again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, you know, the one thing that I have noticed can help me like at least get back into ketosis faster. And the faster I get back into ketosis, you know, the better I'm going to feel. So the thing that I have found, um, so the fastest yet a most unhealthy way of getting <laughs> getting back in um, right away is to um, fast for as long as I can, you know, 24 to 36 hours and do a whole lot of cardio because the, the cardio will kind of burn up the, the glycogen in your body. And if you're fasting as well, it's kind of it's burning through it and getting you back into a fat burning mode. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. But you know, if you're also like feeling the blood sugar fluctuations, the inflammation, you know, stomach trouble or whatever, lack of energy, getting on, you know, a bike and doing two hours of cardio also really sucks to do that. on top. <laughs> um, so, you well, know, yeah, but, couldn't you burn glycogen doing any exercise? I mean, like, sure, any you, cardio. Well, I mean, but any exercise period should burn glycogen. Well, I mean, slower. You know, if you want to, I'm talking about if you want to do this faster, you do more cardio at a, you know, at a higher pace. I mean, sure, I could walk around the mall, but that's not going to do it, you know. I mean, in comparison to taking, a, you know, doing a spinning class where you know you're sweating and you're panting and stuff oh okay i'm not thinking that i'm not thinking light exercise i'm thinking more like resistance training because i don't think redis resistance I... training will do it not the way cardio will hmm. so johnny g um also fasts after a binge that's just oh this and is sounding Ketura, worse and worse Ketura does it as well Johnny G says, get out of my head. Yeah, we're going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I, that is not an ideal, I mean, an ideal solution is not to do it, not to, to you know, have the cheat in the first place. Um, I have found that that is a fast way, but it is also torturous. There's nothing pleasant about it. You know, I'm dealing with sugar cravings. I don't feel good. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I'm not eating, I'm, I'm exercising, you know, way more than I'm, you know, normally used to. So, you know, so none of that feels good. And then, you know, once you get back into ketosis, you feel a little better, but you know, it, I'm still not feeling great. Hmm. So it'll get you back into ketosis. All right. So then how do you know you're back into ketosis? Well, for me, I can feel it. I mean, aside from, of course, testing, um, mm -hmm. uh, although it's been a while since I've tested. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't even know. I, I have to look for my stuff. But um, 
but I feel um, the cravings are definitely less. I feel a little bit more stable. I don't feel like my blood sugar is swinging out, up and down and out of control. Um, mm. And I have a little more energy. So I can definitely feel a difference when I'm in ketosis versus when I'm not. Okay. Man, I must and... have been like, you know, one foot in diabetic land. <laughs> <laughs> what I describes as terrible. It, yeah, and that one binge like puts you right back there. Um, mm -hmm. I meant to ask you this earlier. So when you said you can feel your blood sugar, um, you you feel that you're in a low point. You're hypoglycemic. What does that feel? Well, like? I can feel I can feel on the way up too. Like I start to feel like all jittery and like. You know, it's um, mm -hmm. even when I breathe, it feels like everything is shaking. My heart is kind of racing. I can feel the sugar like get that starting as if, you know, as if I'm running from a tiger, but I'm just standing there. And then I can Jeez. feel, you know, I get to the top and then I can feel it coming down. And then on the other end, it's like I can I'm feeling shaky. Um, I feel really weak, like I, it's hard to move. And, and so then I know I've got to get sugar and I drag myself up to, you know, to get any of whatever is left and just eat it. And then I feel a little better. And then I have to like eat some real food to kind of try to stable things, stabilize things. Wow. Mm -hmm. And as a carnivore, one sugar binge is sending you up to that jittery feeling mm -hmm. and then Oh, it's I mean, for, the worse now because like I'm so not used to having those swings that even um, even a small amount of sugar, like I can feel it. You know, it's not it's not maybe not as scary as um, you know if I eat like a, I don't know. I mean, a big slice of cake, but I can definitely um, feel a big difference. Mm -hmm. I can feel it happening. Maybe the bottoming out. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen. Um, th then I need more sugar to, to have that real bottoming out feeling where I, where I feel like I'm not able to move. Mm -hmm. but, but even on a small amount of sugar, you would start to feel that too, the feeling of having a uh, blood sugar that's too high. Oh, 100%. And I'll tell you, I even like one time when I was in the early days of keto, I wasn't even calling it keto. I was, it was low carb for a long time. This was before we even talked about keto. And at the time, um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't super careful about counting calories. I just didn't eat any bread or anything like that. And I had vegetables mm -hmm. and meat and I was not a person who liked artificial sweeteners. So I didn't really have that. And I would have nuts, but not that much. So, you know, I was, I was in ketosis most of the time, even though I didn't like really know or pay attention to that. But one time I had a desire for something sweet. And so I went and got a sparkling ice. It was the cherry limeade flavor. And I drank half of it. And I swear to God, I was almost ready to pass out. And it's it was artificial sweetener. I mean, it was not even actual sugar. But I could feel, I knew I had knocked myself out of ketosis. And I was like, you know, I didn't even have anything. Are you kidding no. me? Are you kidding me? So... <laughs> I, you know, yeah, and I had all the same feeling, and I was at work, you know, so all of a sudden, I'm like, I can't work, I can hardly sit at my desk, you know, I can hardly, like, get anything done, and it was bad, it was really bad, and then I felt all draggy, so I had to have the rest of it, and then, you know, of course, that starts me on, well, you know, the, let me have one of the candies that are in the bowl, and, you know, mm -hmm. let me get some jelly beans, and, you know, oh, then the whole thing went, so, so. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Do you remember what the sweetener was? It wasn't um, the traditional one. I think it might even have been Stevia's. But Sparkling Ice is known for having um, some other kind of uh, sweetener in it. Okay. All right. Because so, I, I, I need to know if I need to go back and <laughs> revise what I told somebody two days ago about artificial sweeteners. Well, <laughs> I, so the thing I tell people is that you know, some are fine, some are not, but which one is fine differs from person to person. So there's no way to know which one is going to mm -hmm. work for you and which one isn't. And so you just try it and see, and it's possible none will work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so this person had asked, like, well, they kicked me out of ketosis, and then I sent them um, this page from the diet doctor, because you won't find many carnivore pages that even talk about sweeteners at all, because there's no sweetener that's carnivore. Um, and so scallops. I just, <laughs> right, right. Apparently, we need to be grinding up scallops in the powder and making <laughs> carnivore sweetener out of them. Oh my God, Which I'm... scallop creamer. <laughs> oh, that seems so disgusting. <laughs> I'm sure it's it's gross. I'm sure it's not healthy. Like basically anything, once you refine it, it stops being as healthy as what it was before. Yeah, um, yeah. So I told them just like, I don't know, uh, the left side of the chart, like those are the things with the lowest um, effect on blood sugar. So stick to those. Um, but now I'm kind of wondering if I need to say like, oh, just, I really just want to tell people stay off sweeteners altogether, but I know not everyone is carnivore where it's obvious that you can't have sweeteners. Well, I mean, you just have to see, I mean, just like you, you know, can have some sweetener. Like for me, it's, I think it's a syphilic response where my brain was like, oh, sweet, let's get, get things rolling even though it wasn't sugar oh, and there's no calories. Uh, so it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the substance is. That it makes sense. Antifreeze. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anything that is kind of sugary yeah, kind of reminds I mean, the body of sugar. The body goes, Oh, sugar, sugar. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I know what to do. Oh, here she goes again. Oh, let's mm. get, let's get everything going. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, that was, and I was like, man, from artificial sweetener, I mean, I don't even like diet soda and I, mm -hmm. you know, did this because I wanted something sweet that wouldn't knock me off of my plan. Cause I would, things were going well and that just ruined everything. So, mm. yeah. So, um, okay. So I, uh, so those are the, the kinds of responses that can happen when you have that sugar binge. And so the, you know, the things that, um, you know, like I said, that I have found were, you know, basically trying to get the sugar out of your body as fast as possible. And, um, you know, the fastest way is fasting and, and cardio exercise. So resistance training you were asking about, I don't think resist resistance training burns through the glycogen that is in your muscles and in your body fast enough. Um, mm -hmm. to, I mean, it's not that it won't ever, but it's just not fast enough if you're trying to do this quickly. So, um, but you know, the but other it's, thing. Mm -hmm. It's what I would do because I hate cardio. So well, slow or it's not. not like cardio. It, it's not like cardio. You're doing this eternally. This is like for this specific moment, trying to get yourself back in. I, I right. hear you, but I hate, I hate with a okay. passion. It's the most <laughs> boring kind of exercise there is. So if I got to just do something boring, it's going to be resistance. I'm going to go lift weights or I don't know, do a thousand pushups or something. Cardio. Mm -hmm. If, if well, it maybe took me a longer, thousand push-ups would it? I mean, maybe a thousand push-ups or doing like calisthenics where you're like doing burpees and, um, you know, push-ups and jumping jacks. Cause that's, you know, that's still in that sort of cardio range. So that kind of activity, I'm sure. I mean, if you felt like doing two hours <laughs> of that, yeah. Right. That's um, what I was wondering, because if you're doing resistance training, I guess I would say like the right way. Like mm -hmm. you're going to be tired after you're not just doing it and it's working your muscles. It's working your cardiovascular system too. So that's why I was wondering when you said cardio and you were talking about on the bike, like, all right, so what if a person was like working out hard, but it was strength training Would that serve the same purpose? I mean, if you're, I don't think if you're strength training, like, you know, deadlifting 150 pounds, no, because it's different. But if you were doing burpees and mountain climbers and push-ups and sit-ups, then yes, because that, you know, that's like cardio. See, that doesn't make sense to me, because you can do strength training in a way that is still cardio. It's still working your 
I don't know. Are you used to people like lifting weights and then they go sit down for five minutes and then they lift again? Yeah, or get on their phone or write something down or, you know, they're oh. taking resting. Like, you know, I mean, if you're really lifting heavy, you know, people rest longer. Um, but, you know, if you can find a way to do it, then, you know, you should do it. But I'm not, but overall, I'm not recommending this method because, you know, to me, it also sort of sets up fasting and exercise as sort of this punishment for, um, for falling off track, which is not great either. So you, you know, you want to be careful about using that method. Otherwise, you know, you just suffer through for a couple days. And, you know, I, I feel like if, um, you know, being in uh, ketosis for as long as I have, like within three days, um, I'm more or less back, you know, back into ketosis. But, you know, it's a torturous three days. And at every point there, I could succumb to having some more sugar and then, you know, it just sort of resets the clock. So that's why it could be weeks for me to get like back in because, you know, every couple of days I'm going to have a little something, you know, and maybe I won't have a binge, but I'll have like a Hershey kiss or, you know, a little piece of this and a little piece of that. And so like I'm teetering on the edge of ketosis, I get in it and then I'm out and then I'm in and then I'm out and, you know, and that craving continues. And so it takes a while to get to the point where that craving is, is gone or it's just sort of like a thought, you know, now like just the way with cigarettes, like, um, you know, I remember like the good cigarettes I had and, and think fondly of them, but I'm not, you know, there's no part of me that's like got one foot out the door to go buy a pack of cigarettes. And, you know, I can now look at sugar that way, but I, I couldn't always. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, okay. Johnny G agrees with you. So resistance training burns muscle glycogen quicker than cardio intense exercise is best. No, he's saying the opposite. No resistance training burns muscle glycogen quicker than cardio. I think he's agreeing with you that cardio is it. Oh, I as don't know. As far as the most efficient. Well, the, if the goal is to get back into ketosis as fast as possible and burn up all the sugar, you do that. But you don't. Do, this is not a daily thing. This is not what you do all the time. This is just a one time to get there fast enough. So you know, let's say I went out. I, you know, went drinking with friends in the old days and, you know, I had some beers, I had a bunch of mixed drinks and then somebody said, oh, let's order onion rings. And I'm like, yay. And then, you know, oh, let's order this. And then, so the next morning I'm hungover, um, you know, bloated. <laughs> I've had, I've had all this sugar and stuff. I'm knocked out. And then I try to go to the gym and, <laughs> and do, you know, two hours of cardio. Oh. <laughs> They're coming for you. Yeah, yeah. All right, Kitora's done it too. Um, yeah, Johnny G agrees with you, Arian. Um, oh. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so you you got to figure out then what what's going to work best for you guys. And, um, or, you know, as they say, uh, prevention um or a, a, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So mm -hmm. don't do it in the yeah. first place. You could just yeah. not put yourself in this position. <laughs> so, um, so then, you know, the next thing is, um, you know, how, you know, what happens thereafter? So Arian, within a day, you're, you're back on track. Pretty much. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that, um, that next day, somewhere partway through that day, the worst I'm feeling is like, I'm just not as good as I should be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting back there. I'm usually, I'm dehydrated. So at that point, like I'm dealing with that. Um, mm -hmm. The ketosis is on. I don't know that I ever get kicked out, but if I do, it's for a short period of time and I'm right back into it. But it's the, now I'm dehydrated, I'm low salt. So um, I've got to fix my electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Um, at that point, I am very careful to not 
hydrate as much as I normally do, and I am eating normally, salting my food normally. Wait, why are you dehydrated or electrolyte imbalance? Because I had that bad time in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So bad times happened, and then I'm dehydrated after that. Right. I can I can feel it like that. I can feel very quickly um, yeah. and very acutely. So then I'm um, the one thing that I do do kind of different is if I feel thirsty, I will put salt in the water at that point, which is not something that I normally do unless I really feel the need for it. I'm not on an everyday basis putting salt in my water. Mm-hmm. But on those days I do. So is that happen every time you eat off carnivore or only if you like binge? Only if I binge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And regular how about days, all, uh-huh. regular days, I can have like a piece of dessert um, and like a, a, like a piece of dessert and whatever the sides were, like mac and cheese or dressing or something, and I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. May have some like inflammation the next day, but that's it. Yeah. So um, we have a bunch of people watching right now. So I ask those of you who are here, hit that like button um, so we can, uh, you know, so it, it can look good and, you know, drive us up in the algorithm and share our message with more people. So uh, please go ahead and hit that like button. And um, I'd also like to hear from you, uh, you know, when how long has it been since the last time you you know had a sugar binge um is that something you struggle with and um you know how how do you deal with getting back on track i'd like to hear from all of you on that um Mm -hmm. yeah so the other thing that um i do that i will do is um you know sort of commit to doing like a beef and water fast or something like that you know, where I, um, you know, I restrict what I eat and I get really strict about it. That can help me as well get to refocus on, um, you know, what I'm doing and kind of, you know, help me, you know, push through the cravings and everything. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I I feel like I, I kind of naturally do that because I already eat that way. Like today, for instance, I had... Well, not necessarily. So I had eggs, I had bacon, um, I had a little bit of London broil, I uh, cooked myself. You had London broil? How interesting. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't my plan, but it was there. Um, so yeah, I cooked it to eat later. So I had a little bit of that and then I had a steak and that's been it all day. Um, <laughs> But mm-hmm. yeah, on some regular days, like the main time I eat something other than beef is breakfast. So it's kind of natural to go back to a pretty simple way of eating. I don't necessarily. So when you go all beef, you're not eating any eggs, no pork. It's literally just beef and water, right? And salt. Uh huh. I mean, different and, types of beef, you know, so. Right. And how long do you stay on that? Is that like until you get back right or is it just a yeah. couple days? I mean, I find that it can take, you know, 10 days to two weeks to like hit my peak again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it takes a while. It's not, you know, it's not quick. And so that's why, you know, like if you're, for some people, if you're like testing things or whatever, like you really have to give a good amount of time for your system to clear out and resettle again before you start testing the next thing. Because some people will do, you know, just give themselves three days and sometimes that's not enough. Yeah. If their response to the thing is anything like yours, um, mm-hmm. you need weeks, at least a week. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. would be more. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, you don't know. If all you did was get back to, I don't feel like crap. If you just got back to some, like, baseline, which is really far below what your peak is. Um, 
I would think at that point, all you know, if you keep testing food in that cycle, like test the thing makes me feel like crap, I get back to not crap, and then I test another thing and it makes me feel like crap. All you know is what things take you down, like what things are the worst for you, but you don't know which things actually pull you away from your peak. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to feel, um, you know, pretty strongly in support of fasting. Um, I don't know that that's, I mean, that's not something that early on, if you're just turning to carnivore that you need to do. And, you know, there's a lot of benefits from eating carnivore and there's a lot of, you know, healing that needs to be done and, and caught catching up in terms of eating beef and animal fat. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that there is some healing aspects to fasting that just don't come from eating. Um, mm. And that can be really helpful, too, in the process of, um, you know, recovering from a sugar binge. I mean, I think for me, like I've already explained, you know, a, a lot, like I've got all of these allergies going on, which is clearly a gut problem. And so fasting is very important in dealing with a gut problem. Um, so it, it's more beneficial for me than for someone, you know, who maybe has something else going on. Although you've got a gut problem going on too. So I well, don't know. I feel like I had one and I guess I feel like, uh, I'm a little surprised by this. Katora said that she's never had that, um, that bad bathroom experience after a sugar binge. Um, it happens to me like every time. It's like, I had to figure out, um, I, I re remember thinking about like, why is this happening? And then remembering that, well, when kids over consume sugar, they throw up or they have a tummy ache. Like the body does not want that much sugar all at once. And it lets you know very quickly that it's not happy with this. I got to deal with this. I didn't plan on dealing with this. You're going to feel the pain too, because you need to know that this isn't good. Um, <laughs> So your body's like, I, I thought we were clear on this, but since it right. seems to be, <laughs> let me put an exclamation point under right. this so that you are right. clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like my gut is like, go back out there and get a switch because you don't learn. <laughs> and you're going to learn today. So I think that um, I don't know if that's a gut problem or if that's like, the gut acting like it's supposed to, like Johnny G said, like it's a huge difference in pH. It's all of a sudden these, the bacteria that I have are not the ones that deal with a ton of sugar. And mm -hmm. the ones that do deal with sugar are not really there as much. And then all of a sudden they have all this sugar to work on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, I understand what Kitora is saying too, because I don't, um, I don't generally have that much of a problem in the bathroom. I mean, you know, for me, I'm having these blood sugar, you know, wild swings. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, for everybody, it just depends on where, what your weakness was and what was bothering you. So, right. um, you know, it's, it, it, whatever, you know, your illness was, that's where it's going to, um, to, to show. Yeah. So it feels like, I don't know if it's a gut problem or if it's that my gut is having a very negative reaction to a thing that it should negatively react to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah. Although when that, I was uh, a kid, like I would get terrible gas pains if I ate sugar on an empty stomach. And I, mm -hmm. I knew it, you know, so like there'd be times when I'd be offered a donut in the morning and it was like, oh, I really want this donut, but I don't want to have a stomach ache all day. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Eat the donut. So, um, but you know, I knew it. And I remember like the week, the week before Christmas, you know, when you're doing like at school, you're doing secret Santa and everybody's got, you know, chocolate and stuff the whole week. I would just walk around doubled over. And, uh, oh. and I knew it was the sugar and, and, you know, at lunch I'd be like, you know, I should probably get some broccoli. Like, I think that'll <laughs> really help. So, you know, if a kid is Which like, is just more vegetables, <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. But if a kid's like, I need more vegetables, it's like clear. I knew what the problem yeah. was, but you know, I still wanted the rice krispie treat. 
that's pretty amazing that as a kid you realize that because i think i remember um going to my babysitter's house and the other kids that would go there um this was my first introduction to like i guess continental breakfast um like having sweets for breakfast we never had unless it was like waffles or pancakes but those always came with real food too we weren't just eating those meanwhile i go over here and now we're having donuts for breakfast or we're having chocolate chip pancakes and no meat it's yeah. just the pancakes well that's what and sucks like you, you know a lot of places you know pancakes and waffles don't come with other stuff and i always was like oh i really want the pancakes but if i don't have bacon or sausage my stomach's gonna hurt and it was again it was like this choice which one which one pancakes right and I don't know when I was a kid, I don't know if I noticed or realized that I would, or maybe it wasn't happening, but I knew I didn't like just having, it felt like dessert for breakfast. And I knew I didn't like that. Like I have an aunt who can just eat cake for breakfast. Like if there's leftover cake, she's going to go wherever that is. And she's going to eat that for breakfast and oh supposedly God, be wrong okay. With that? <laughs> well, her arthritis is what's wrong with that. But... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, um, you know, clearly, I her, totally get where she's coming from. Yeah, I yeah. Too. Um, but as a kid, I don't know if I realized that it was bad for me. I just knew that I didn't like it. I knew I didn't want just a sweet thing for breakfast. It's got to be balanced with something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm I think sure Katora agrees, or maybe she was that person who could have the <laughs> sweets for breakfast. <laughs> I remember what, one she's time raising her hand was, for something. I don't know. I remember one time, though, when I was in high school, um, a bunch of friends and I decided to go to Great Adventure in New Jersey. And so there was a mm -hmm. bus from the Port Authority that would take you there. Now, back in the 80s, the Port Authority was like the worst place. You know, kids <laughs> hung out there looking for runaways and you know, drug dealers and, you know, murders. I mean, it was a terrible place. <clears throat> so this is built there. in New York before Giuliani cleaned it up, supposedly, right? Yeah, supposedly. Um, yeah, well, this was like, you know, Koch era. <laughs> so, okay. uh, you know, so we were taking this bus out to um, to Great Adventure and, uh, or Magic, uh, um, Six Flags, that's what it was. So... Yeah. Uh, but if you're but, in the Northeast, you call it Great Adventure. It, well... It, yes, it is great adventure in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, like all my friends, adventure. all my yeah. people that I know from like uh, Philly, New Jersey, or New York, they all call it great adventure. So now that's what I call it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we were going to great adventure. And so I, um, so we were in the Port Authority and everyone's like, oh, let's just get, you know, like a bagel and some, you know, donuts and stuff for breakfast. And I was like, I can't eat that. And I was thinking, I don't want to go to Great Adventure with a stomach ache. So I forced no. everybody to walk around and look for a hot dog vendor. And meanwhile, this is like 7 a.m. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I need a hot dog. You know, I, I can't eat. I, I'll eat the donut after the hot dog, but I can't eat right. it first, you know. And so and this is not a safe place for young girls to be walking around for any reason. So mm -hmm. it was it was a very dangerous thing that we did. But we went looking for a hot dog. Did you find the hot dog? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's Good. always a hot dog vendor somewhere. Right. That's one of the things I feel like it's such a waste in New York, but I got to do it. Like I want a slice of pizza from some nasty place just on a random street. And I want a hot dog off the street. Yeah. <laughs> now as a carnivore, there's no way I could stomach a hot dog off the street. I, you know, a hot dog I can barely deal with, but off the street. No, no. Huh. I've seen too much now. I've seen too much. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, um, Katura finds my stories nostalgic. Um, yeah, the bad old days when, you know, a young girl couldn't walk around the city without getting harassed by a pimp. <laughs> uh, yeah, those were the good old days. Yeah. Um, 
I know. I remember one time my mom was supposed to be picking me up and I was supposed to have bought a coat at Macy's on 34th Street, but then I couldn't find one I liked, so I didn't buy one and I wasn't wearing a coat and it was really cold out. And I was supposed mm -hmm. to be meeting her in Times Square, like at, you know, 41st Street or something, like right at the beginning of Times Square, which at the time was Pimp Central and, mm -hmm. and Runaways <laughs> and, you know, um, the nudie movies and all that kind of stuff. So I had no coat. I was standing out there. My mom was late, so I was standing out there for like two hours. And so, of course, everybody there thought I was a runaway because I had no coat and, you know, was just standing there. And so I have never been propositioned so much from either people looking, you know, either looking for a good time or looking for a new girl for their, their corral uh, or whatever they call it. So I, you know, yeah, it's stable. That was the word I was thinking of corral. Um, but yeah, that I, it was like, it was terrible. So when my mom finally came, I was like, oh my God, I was fighting <laughs> off so many people. I thought for sure someone was just going to drag me away. It was terrible. Wow. Um, how old were you? I think I was 18 or 19. So okay. I was, I was, I was a freshman in college and that was why, I don't know, for whatever reason, I didn't have a coat and I was going to buy one and I didn't like what I found. And uh, so I didn't buy one and that was the problem. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it was like right in that in-between stage when it was about to be super cold and, you know, so it was too cold for me to be out without a coat and right. it stu I stood out. And so, yes, I, you know, yeah. So, um, and isn't dollar slice pizza the only affordable food in New York City? It sounded great pre carnivore. Um, I don't even think there's anything a dollar in New York City anymore. <laughs> but yeah, those were it, good times. You, you can still get a slice of pizza for super cheap, or at least you could two years ago. So, unless yeah. inflation has just hit you all out of nowhere, but it's still. I feel like those were cheap and um, yeah, definitely was not. I wasn't fully carnivore at the time. Um, I got a bagel with cream cheese. And it was like a huge smear of cream cheese on it. It was like, like <laughs> yeah. that thick and <laughs> tasted so good and yeah. beat me up. Yeah. Like no lactate pill could, com yeah. could combat that amount of cream cheese. Yeah. But it's funny, you know, I never liked bagels and cream cheese, so it was always a problem in New York. Like, it was just, you're, you know, it's like, what's wrong with you? It's like, it's too much bread. I don't like bread that much. And, you know, a little cream cheese is okay, but, you know, a big amount is like, no. Oh, like, see, I realized today, um, I always thought it was pastries, but it's not just pastries. For me, it's just sweet bread, period. Like, so I was in the grocery store, and... I came to buy just like heavy cream and coffee and but I'm in there and the grocery store is just a den of temptation. So <laughs> I think we're even I, tempting Johnny G as we talk now. So stop <laughs> talking bagels. <laughs> but finish your story quick. <laughs> this this story has a happy carnivore ending though. So oh, good. no, crusty bread roll with butter. No, no, no. Now you're just this is like now you're just food. getting you know Keep hardcore that. you're getting all the way right. into that porn <laughs> so um i'm like walking through the store and i'm like i really want something i want a treat of some kind but i can't just get i don't want to just you know fall off some days i let myself fall off today definitely don't want to not into it it's not especially it's the morning too it's not i'm gonna spend the whole day crappy if I do that, don't want to yeah. do it. Yeah. So I had to walk past the bakery and I hate that they do this. I had to walk past the bakery to get to the deli where yeah. I buy salami and cheese. And that's my treat. Yeah. But like, as I'm waiting for her to, uh, she's cutting my salami. Uh, the woman at the deli counter, I look behind me and there's cake and some other sort Why of. Why is that all around the deli? Because even don't today, know. I was asking the grocery store, I wanted to get like disposable gloves. 
and they didn't have any, but they they got one of the boxes that you know they have for the deli and to sell that mm -hmm. to me. But I had to wait over by the deli. So as I'm waiting, I'm like, there's baklava, there's cake, there's croissants, there's all this stuff. And I'm like, why? Ugh, this is a deli. Why? I finally like, saw a stick of pepperoni, and I was like, oh, carnivore candy. I, I mean, I don't want to get the pepperoni, but I'm going to get the pepperoni because I have to have something to offset right. this. Right. I, I yeah. feel like there is a thing where you've been tempted, and it's really hard to completely release the temptation. Yeah. So, yeah, get yourself a little something special mm -hmm. that actually is carnivore. It's a completely mm -hmm. different taste. It's not going to satisfy the same craving. But, like, I didn't have a craving. It wasn't like I really wanted something sweet. I was just yeah. in a place where it's so easy to buy junk food. I mean, and that's something to think about, you know, as we're dealing with like what I call the sugar blues or all the sugar cravings is um, you need to have like a lot of times, you know, this stuff happens because we're we're either out and we're hungry or we're unprepared um, or, you know, someone's pushing something on us. So it can be helpful to have something with you that you feel like is a special treat so that if you have that, it's going to help. Um, right. For me, it's, you know, it's pepperoni or scallops, you know, pan fried in butter, but that's less easy to just come upon. But, um, but pepperoni is one of those things that feels really special. Um, cheese is another one of those things. If you can eat cheese, that's another one of those things that people really find special. Um, although uh, in the, if you watch the video last night, um, Lynn was saying that if she has cheese, she's going to eat all of it. So for her, it's as addictive as sugar. So, mm -hmm. you know, cheese is iffy for some people. What, do, yeah. what about you? It sounds like salami and cheese is your go-to. Yeah, yeah, I need to do that more often when I feel like being bad. Uh, don't mm -hmm. go to a gas station and pick up chips or something. Go to a, go to a grocery store, buy salami, buy cheese. And if mm -hmm. not salami, then like pastrami or something else. One of those meats that isn't just a plain meat, it's like spice. I love pastrami. Oh. Pastrami is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like those, I can just wrap them up, like one slice of cheese and then a, a couple um, pieces of the meat around it and yeah. eat that. And I'm just as satisfied. Also bacon, but bacon takes cooking. And these things are instantly put mm -hmm. together into something I can eat. Like, if I yeah. was really feeling bad about it, I could have did it in the car as yeah. soon as I left the store. Yeah. You know, that was one of the lucky things when I was <clears> growing <throat> up in New York is that, you know, there. I mean, at the time, um, you know, it was, delis were ubiquitous. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and also, like, um, uh, diners were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so, and every diner served a pastrami, pastrami sandwich. So, mm -hmm. and, and it was the, the style or the way they serve it is like, there's this much meat inside the sandwich and then, you know, two slices of bread. So very often, even then, like, I just didn't like bread growing up. So I might eat the sandwich open face. Um, so I generally just didn't eat much of the bread. So it was like, in a way, like a carnivore haven. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, Johnny G. Yes. Um, <clears throat> A giant so, Reuben stat. <laughs> yeah, like the same way they do those pastrami sandwiches. So there's two places here in Baltimore um, where you can get huge, um, huge uh, corned beef sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like it's so big, you might as well take the bread off because all you're tasting is meat. And I don't really like rye bread. Of all the kinds of bread, rye is one of the least satisfying. So, yeah, a giant Reuben, because um, then it has the Thousand Island dressing on it, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Which is just sugar. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it's so little. It, at least then, it's like that little bit of Thousand hey, Island. Hey, I get it. I liked it. Mostly yeah. what you're having is the corned beef. The fire. And the, what kind of cheese is that on a Reuben? Is that Swiss or is that provolone? I didn't get it with cheese. Oh, I didn't I get the Reuben. I didn't get the Reuben. I would just get the pastrami sandwich because I didn't like cheese. Like, oh my god, oh. there's so many things. As I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> As a kid, I didn't really like cheese either. 
I mean, if I could have, if I had known that carnivore existed and if I could have eaten that way, I absolutely 100% would have been a carnivore except for cake. But probably had I really been eating carnivore, I would, those desires for cake would have lessened and I probably wouldn't have, uh, I probably wouldn't have done it because I would have felt so much better and knowing mm. how bad it made me feel. That so, if, but left to my own, um, you know, my own like uh, will and, and desires, I would have eaten um, burgers from, uh, you know, Burger King. And it, had I known that I could take the bun off, I would have. But I, <laughs> I often had, you know, got a double, you know, burger or double cheeseburger. Um, I would have gotten these deli sandwiches <clears throat> and taken off the bread, um, you know. Yeah. See, yeah, I loved the bread. I think that's that was what I realized at the grocery store is that I'm not just a donut person. I'm not just a pastry person. I am a sweet bread. Potatoes, I could do without them. Don't care. Regular bread, it's okay, I guess. Like basically on sandwiches is the, is the main place. But other than that, it's a vehicle for butter. Mm -hmm. um, but sweet, <laughs> sweet bread. That's my vice. Whatever bread is sweet. If that comes in a pastry, if that's cake, if that's a brownie, yeah. all those things. Yeah, yeah. Sweet bread, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how you got to say it, too. Do you want the lean yeah. or the fatty brisket? Sir. Fatty. Fatty. Don't disrespect me ever again. <laughs> You got to demand exactly. satisfaction after that. Do you want the lean brisket? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, while you're all here, um, don't forget Saturday night, the 16th, Deborah and I are cooking live um, uh, here on our channel. Ooh. We're um, going to cook dinner live. And um, so join us. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. Um, Deborah has committed to making an easy steak. So I'm going to do the um, more exotic. I bought a beef shank. Um, so okay. it's going to have, uh, yeah, the beef shank and the, um, you know, and it, there's a little bit of marrow inside the bone that's in the center of it. So, yeah. So that's please gonna be, cool. be there. I hope you all, um, you know, many of you, if you decide you want to cook with, with us, um, buy the beef shank. I know we talked about oxtails, but I couldn't find any for, you know, a reasonable price. But I've got that. We're gonna have and to, I've got yeah. a brisket, which I think I'm also going to make. Because I only got a small beef shank, and that's probably not going to be enough. <laughs> How big is it? Uh, it's about this big. With the uh, bone but in then the that bone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that may not be enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe the brisket too. Um, that should be fun. John H. G. is cooking this... meat over the coals. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. That's, that's how yeah. you're going to break that fast. Yeah. Um, and that is this Saturday. Yep. In two days. Yep. yep. Seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, depending on how it goes, like I got a little bit of equipment to kind of manage my camera, phone, blah, blah, blah. So we'll see how it goes. But I think I might like to do that more often because honestly, I get a lot of questions about how I make stuff. And I don't think I make things that are very complicated. So I realize people really don't know how to cook. <laughs> so, um, you know, no shade. Just call them out. Why don't you? No, no, no shade. It's just like people don't know. You don't know. I had someone ask me how I made scrambled eggs and steak, like a recipe. And I was like, really? Yes. 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 Oh. So, you know, okay. people don't know. Okay. Y'all don't know how to cook. Yeah. People don't know. And, but I, you know, I don't think that that is, um, so weird, you know, it's like the foodie culture, you know, pushes like, um, you know, all these cookbooks and we're, we're taught to like eat the rainbow and have all this crudite oh. and things that are very colorful. So the types of foods that we eat require recipes, you know, they require being chopped up and mixed with things and herbs and things done in a certain order. But um, cooking meat requires a different skill set. You know, it's not the same thing. Like we don't, there's no recipe that's needed. It's, you, you just need to understand how, you know, fat and salt and meat 
um, you know, and fa and fire like work together. And that's a very different thing. And, you know, I feel like I got some of that. My grandmother was not like a baker. You know, she didn't make muffins. She didn't make donuts or cookies. She didn't do any of that kind of stuff. But she made meat mm -hmm. well. So that was kind of what I learned, you know. But I think a lot of people don't do that. And, you know, I, I've got to say, even through the pandemic, um, I am stunned by how many people are still ordering out, how much food people are still getting from restaurants. And that tells me that people really um, don't know how to cook or don't want to, <laughs> um, which I get. But, yeah. you know, but I think being carnivore, it, it just requires you to do cooking. Like you can't, you can't really get away with eating out all the time because it's, it's just going to be really hard to do. You're not going to get, you're not going to get enough food for your needs. I mean, unless you're okay with ordering two and three entrees. Yeah. And I guess this is what's different for me, like Kator or Kator. I keep putting an N in your name. Sorry. Um, she said that she hates recipes and that's how I feel. So like I kind of despise looking at recipes to, to learn how to cook something. I kind of just want to be told how to do it. And I just want the basics. I'm going to figure out the rest. So I don't really want people to tell me what spice is. I don't like things that take a whole lot of steps. Like when it's more than 10 steps, like that's a problem for me. I feel like all right, I'm, this is not going to be a thing that I do on a regular basis. Um, I just want to know how to cook the thing and then I will decide how I want to play with the recipe every time I do it. And I think that led to me learning the basics of cooking as opposed to learning recipes. Mm -hmm. And I guess, yeah, with that foodie culture, it does make sense. Uh, the argument you lay out makes perfect sense that a lot of people just learned well, I don't really know how to do eggs, but I know how to do eggs Benedict. Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know how to make um, poached eggs, but I don't know how to scramble eggs. <laughs> right, right. Or yeah. I, I know one way to do steak, but like just generally, can I cook steak? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know. Or I know how to braise a biscuit, or I'm not a biscuit, a brisket with like wine and all this stuff that takes like, a bunch of steps, but can I just buy mm -hmm. a hunk of meat and cook it? Not really. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to see D Diane says, hello, I'm new here and new to carnivore. Welcome Diane. We love new people and we love that you are considering trying carnivore. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So I would love it if you'd write in the chat, you know, what made you think about uh, giving it a try? And have you heard anything tonight that's um, going to help you go forward in your journey? So just write it in the chat and, and let us support you. Um, and then Katora says, I don't want to cook, but being carnivore is made it a little easier. No chopping, cutting. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you don't have to think about so many things. Like before, you know, you had to have like two sides, you know, vegetable, piece of meat, like, you know, other things. Now there's only one thing to cook. And that, you know, or maybe two, if you feel like mixing up your meats. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Porsche, Porsche says, especially with a grill, no steps at all. Just turn on the fire. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to turn on either the Instapot or the air fryer or the cast iron and put meat in. Yeah. It sizzles. I put on salt, like especially since I stopped using a whole bunch of spices. God, cooking has become so simple. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I am stunned, stunned by what a difference. Uh, you know, my tongue is so much more um, discerning, you know. So uh, I, I got a bag of um, jerky from People's Choice. So just a shout out to them. It's good stuff. I enjoyed it. Um, but it was original flavor. And uh, I thought that, I assumed the original flavor means nothing on it but salt. And so I'm eating That's it. And I'm like, think. why? Yeah. And I'm like, why does my mouth feel like it's burning? Like, this seems kind of <laughs> spicy. And then I look at the back and it's like, it's got a spice mix and garlic. And I was mm. like, oh, yeah, okay. 
And I was like, man, I can't believe that I prefer salt only. <laughs> like I have gotten to the point where there is no spice that I enjoy, especially not garlic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you all, not everybody is like that. So if you still like spices, I would say give it a try. And they have this um, machaca, I think it's called, um, which is like shredded beef um, jerky, which apparently is a, in Mexico is all the rage. You mix it in with your scrambled eggs and like that's a thing. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't do that, but I think that would sound good. Yeah. Um, so, Johnny G says, I love recipes, but hate buying 300 ingredients to use once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that part. I've got like all of these expensive spices. I even bought saffron once. Saffron, which was like $30 for, yep. for like a little, a little tiny bit of it. I used it once. Once. Mm -hmm. Turned everything yellow. Yeah. I have a ton of spices. I remember like people would come over and be impressed with like all the spices I have. And now I'm like, this is a lot of cabinet space that I could probably reclaim. Mm -hmm. Except mm -hmm. I don't have anything to put in its place because carnivore, you end up needing less cabinets too. <laughs> There's so much less stuff to store. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, I know. I have random things up there, I, like things that are not kitchen things. It's just like, oh, this is a great place for my art supplies. <laughs> I should do that. Yeah. yeah. I should do that. I have extra books, and I don't want to buy another bookshelf. I should throw books up there. Your cookbooks, that's a good place for them. I only I, have one, I, I'm in giving fact, it away. I actually went through all my cookbooks maybe a, a couple of months ago, and I pulled out all the vegetarian, all of the non-meat and non-keto ones. Um, I had a lot, too, a lot, mm -hmm. and I, I got rid of them all. But, you know, it was kind of like, wow, this is, I'm committed, because it's been years it's... since I used any of them, but still. Right. Yeah. Like I realized, so the reason I gave mine away, well, I, I didn't give it away yet, but I put it in the box to be given away is it's a, so a short story. I grew up in a home that had that like red and white, uh, Betty Crocker cookbook. Every and, home had that. <laughs> right. Um, so, and the Fanny Farmer, the Fanny Farmer cookbook. I don't know that I've seen that one. I don't know if mm -hmm. my mom had that. But she definitely had the Betty Crocker once, this Fanny Farmer. So I thought, I'm grown. And I like the idea of taking care of myself and being like grown, grown. So mm -hmm. I need to have one of these too. So I go and buy the, it's like the 15th edition now. It's way newer looking than my mom's. My mom's has like notes all in it and stuff and little scraps mm -hmm. of paper from other recipes that she's I bet Betty in. looks more modern now. Newer haircut, you know, <laughs> right. just like, just like Jema Aunt Jemima, you know, she's now got the smart little haircut. Yeah. <laughs> no more do-rag. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to keep this book. Um, yeah. Or I need to have this book. But and I used it a few times as I was cooking on my regular, mm -hmm. um, just as things come up, like, oh, okay, how do I do this? I read the recipe. I'm not buying all the ingredients they want, but I know enough about cooking that I know what I can substitute or what I can leave out um, as far as like spices or whatever. And now I realize I went through all my books and I looked at everything on the shelf and decided what I wanted to get rid of. I haven't touched that book in over like three years. So it's been even longer than I've been carnivore. Yeah. And as much as I want to keep it for nostalgia, if I'm literally never opening it, it's taking up space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do say, I, I do find that certain cookbooks are really helpful, like Julia Child's cookbook, um, you know, and the older cookbooks that are from like the 50s and the 40s when people still ate meat. Like, um, you know, you know, I'm not going to use the sides or the baking part, but like how mm -hmm. to make meatloaf, how to make a pot roast, like that's information is still helpful. And Julia Child's like, or the French cooking, you know, you get all the stuff that we don't even think about, you know, like making 
um, bone broth or aspic or, um, you know, potted meats and, and other stuff that's super helpful for us as carnivores that, you you know, mm. you're not going to get that anywhere else. And see, yeah, that's what I would want. Mm -hmm. That would be more useful to me. Um, and I came across um, somebody who, like, collected old cookbooks. And, like, there were some from, like, the 1800s that just described foods that we just, we don't even have words for now. Like, people don't eat really? this stuff at all. Yeah. Um, but potted meat was, like, a very common thing, which is, you know, more or less, like, um, a way to take lean lean meat and put fat on it i mean and and um and you seal it with fat and so it's storable and lasts outside of refrigeration so it's more or less pemmican but in a jar hmm. so yeah um so that was very common so you know there's oh, a lot of wow. stuff wow i'm seeing a picture where people have made uh hot dogs basically they took potted meat and put it in a hot dog bun <laughs> It basically, yeah, I'm not sure if I would want to eat that or not. I don't know. Potted meat may taste great. I've just never had it. But it basically looks like, yeah, like a pemmican. It's that pink instead of pe my pemmican's always like dark mm -hmm. brown. Um, or like pate, but not made I mean, it depends it. on the meat that it's made with. I've had it with rabbit and, um, you know, it was okay. Hmm. So there you go. Now, Diane says I'm diabetic, did great on keto, but have fallen off and need to get my glucose under control. So you're in the right place, Diane. This is the place. Yeah. And I don't know if you were here from the beginning of the stream, but I talked about, um, you know, what happens to me when I um, fall off a, a carnivore program and how my blood sugar, you know, just rises and falls and gets all crazy. So, um, yeah, you know, I know how you're feeling. And yeah, you got to get that glucose under control. It's important. But you can do it. Yes. Um, let's see. Keturah, um only likes like salt only, but the spices for the family. Yeah. Um, I think Joe doesn't like that. <laughs> he makes a <laughs> vomit face. Um, oh my God, Johnny G says saffron is thirty five hundred dollars a pound. Oh my God, crazy. Uh. That's yeah. way too much. I'm sure it's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, it is not not thirty five hundred dollars worth. Like you know. Good God. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you, I think you got some pretty good ideas now about how to, um, you know, how to do a carnivore diet and in such a way as to, um, you know, to help you you know, to, to help you get over a sugar binge. But again, just to be clear, um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So don't do it. <laughs> it's just better not to do it. Right. Yeah. Even, even me getting back quickly, like it's still not good. It's still not like, oh, this is a thing that I'll do every two weeks because I don't mind at all. No, it's a crappy feeling. Um, so you were saying, what'd you say? <laughs> Literally. Literally? Li yes, yes. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> Crappy. <thing. laughs> so, um, I love using you... those icons on the thumbnail. I hope everybody else enjoyed it too. <laughs> so graphic. Right. On top of, on top of jelly beans. So I hope that mentally I was able to connect jelly beans and sugar with a toilet. Right. Jelly beans, toilet. Jelly beans, toilet. Jelly beans, toilet. Yeah. Got it? It, it <laughs> is programming you all right now. Yes. And herself. Ah, <laughs> so yeah. um, the the cardio is the bad way. What's or not the bad way, but the not so recommended way. You will feel miserable. What's the better way or the least the less miserable? I mean, you know, the better way is to just get right back on it and make the next meal that you eat a carnivore meal and, you know, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Just keep eating a carnivore meal and, you know, eventually you'll feel better. 
So, okay, so that's the other route to recovery. If you're not in a rush, if you can just take your time, go ahead and do that, and you yeah, will get back. Yeah, just make the next thing that you eat just, you know, a carnivore meal. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're going to ha- know that you're going to have to deal with some cravings. Um, you know, you might not feel great. Maybe be easy on yourself. Get a lot of sleep. You know, you, you don't want to add more cravings from lack of sleep on top of everything else. So, right. you know, try to reduce your stress and all that. Mm-hmm. That is one thing that hits me is um, the cravings after eating after a binge especially um like just a little bit of sugar i'm normally okay but like yeah that if i binge i will feel the urge the next day and i don't immediately put it together that it's because of what i did before it might be like way later and i'm thinking why am i craving i just want chips for some reason or i really want to go to the store and buy something stupid Mm -hmm. and then as I'm trying to decide why this is happening, because I realized that this is very unusual. I don't normally crave. Then I go, oh, it's because you were a dumbass yesterday. That's why. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we have to remember that those cravings can show up um, much longer and much later than, um, than you think. So, you know, I can have cravings for days. You know, it's not even just the single day afterwards like it can take Mm -hmm. days um and that's why i'm saying like it can take me up to 10 days to two weeks to like really hit my stride and feel like i don't have cravings or you know i'm not interested in eating anything yep yeah porsche says even the sugar-free um chocolates are a a fail don't do it um, my friend sent me a picture of the keto corner at Rite Aid. <laughs> <laughs> There's a key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can, well, I don't know. Let me see if I can pull up the picture. Um, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to show it to you in a way that makes sense. But, like, it was. Keto corner. Yeah. It was pretty unbelievable. Um, and, uh oh. Um, and I noticed in there, you know, where they have all the jerky, there was a bunch of jerky in there and Stouffer's chocolates, which I guess were for mm. diabetics. But um, I noticed in there with all of the um, with all the jerky, there was plant based jerky. And I was like, what is that? What is plant based jerky? Like, what plant is based. that? Why do y'all why? Stop why? Stop yeah. lying. So it's like, why? I mean, why are you plant based if you so need to mimic these foods? I don't know. It was, you know, it was pretty unbelievable. Right. Um, you don't see yeah. me trying to make like meat salad. Don't make yeah. plant jerky. It's I don't know if you can see this. Um, it was here, plant based jerky. Yeah, I see it. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. But generally, you know, it was just like a bunch of jerky. There was the, the, a Slim Fast, because Slim Fast is now keto, and uh, like Russell Stover's and stuff like that. So, mm. but keto was the number one diet search this year again. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of people... Why- um, Go ahead. That's why what? No, no. I mean, that's why people are trying to monetize it. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, it's it's frustrating because um, I think I talked it might have been on one of these or it might have been in the Zoom, but I talked about a friend who like started keto and like they she was looking at me like, well, you do. A, <clears throat> I mean, your carnivore diet is basically keto, right? And I was like, eh, I guess. But like keto is so more uh, inclusive that it doesn't feel like the same thing to me. It doesn't feel like I know that I eat a ketogenic diet, so therefore I eat a subset of keto. But 
I would never lump myself in with keto because I feel yeah. like the health benefits of carnivore are completely different. There's so many people who talk about like the energy they felt on keto versus carnivore was very different or digestive problems completely cleared up on carnivore that mm -hmm. they still felt on keto. And this girl tried it. She tried keto. She was eating a bunch of keto junk. She was eating keto bread and a bunch of other stuff and screwed up her body and was like, well, screw this. I'm not doing this because she didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're monetizing it and people are searching it. And it's it's like the right, it's a step in the right direction towards healthy. But depending on how you do keto, if you're not committing to in like a well well thought out and i guess even that sounds more complicated than it needs to be if you're not committing to single ingredient foods if you're still going to eat junk food but be keto along the way it's not going to work yeah well i think and the that's problem what they that promote. people i'm sorry go ahead i uh, just said and that's what they promote yeah I mean, I think that people get confused because they go to the grocery store and there are like all these products labeled keto. And so they buy that and then they think they're on a keto diet and they don't know that, you know, it's about eating, you know, reducing your carbs and, um, you know, bringing your carbs under a certain amount. And so, yeah, like they get confused by, you know, the keto corner. And they just right. are like, oh, yeah, I'm doing it. I no, no, plant based jerky. Yeah, because oh. I want to be keto. The animals are still bad for me, so this is yep. better. I know why is plant based jerky there? That's not. I mean, that's the furthest from keto. Not that the other jerky is, you know, all that great, and it's got right. some sugar in it too. But yeah, anyway, I had a I had a piece of store jerky today, and ugh, it like then I came home and had some of my jerky. It was so much better. Mm -hmm. Just well, simple. I also happened to make jerky last night. So when the the jerk the other jerky arrived today, it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> homemade, you know, store bought. It's artisanal and from LA, but homemade store bought. Right, and then you eat it, and it's like spiced all to hell. Well, it wasn't bad. It just was not for me. Um, not right. exactly for me, but, um, yeah, yeah. but now That's I'm like I mean. overflowing like, with turkey. It just wasn't exactly what you wanted. Yeah. But, um, GMO says, uh, even after eating some sugar, some sausage made in tomato sauce caused me to then want sugar. Yeah. Sausage is notorious. There's all kinds of stuff in it and sometimes it can have a ton of sugar in it. So Sausage is one of those things that really can make you want more. But pepperoni, like, is one of those things that, you know, it's just having a little makes me want to have so much more. So it makes me think, what the heck is in there? That makes it taste so good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, and Keturah says natural sugars are not good. Um, and then Johnny G says stress. I heard they pull piglets away from the mother while still suckling because the stress makes them come to weight quicker. It's scary. Mm. That is horrible. Makes sense. Um, horrible. Sorry to yeah. hear that. Yes. Um, I mean, hopefully we all generally know that, like, it's not that you shouldn't eat pigs. I'm not going to say that you shouldn't because I definitely eat bacon all the time. But, yeah, the... I feel like cows of the animals that we raise, like cows, probably goats um, and sheep too, are like the most ethically raised out of all of them. Mm -hmm. And chickens and pigs are not raised ethically on big mm -hmm. farms. Yeah. Yeah. That's awful. Um, so Portia says the chocolates give you the runs. Um, loaded with sugar alcohols. Yeah, sugar alcohols, those are bad. Um, I have definitely had some epically bad times with sugar alcohols. And, you know, I remember one time, again, this was when in the early days when I was still low carb before it was called keto, and I was having mm -hmm. cravings, and um, and I was like, oh, I got to get something. And then there was a candy store around the store corner from my office, not like candy, like 
selling candy bars, but candy like, you know, with the um, big containers of like, uh, of um, jelly beans that were by color and you could order, you know, by the quarter pound and so on. So like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was in there and I was trying to decide what to get and what would not be too much sugar. Cause I was like, ah, you know, I'm still trying to be low carb. And then I saw sugar free and I was like, Oh, great. I'm going to totally do this. And Oh my God, you know, and I got a quarter of a pound, which of course I ate entirely. Um, and that afternoon was so, so bad and i had no idea that this was going to happen i don't know why they don't come with a warning sign um because i was at work i mean i was at work oh. you know and i ate like a quarter pound of this stuff so it was bad yeah they really should and this is why i would tell people like I guess it depends on how it affects you personally, but I would rather have actual sugar that at least my body is built to handle than something completely artificial, like what's just going to go in most sugar-free things that still taste sweet. Like, no, I would much rather just a small amount of the regular sugar. Well, I mean, after (laughs) that experience... What's so funny? Johnny G's comment. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Johnny well, I after that, I was like, never again. Never, ever again. So yeah. sugar alcohols were not a thing. Um, not a thing that I did. Um, but... <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend against them. But of the sweeteners, they're, they most mimic the sugar. So I get why, you know, people keep using them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, G- GMO, that's definitely, or GMO, that's definitely true. Um, a lot of the, especially the, the artificial sweeteners do taste more sweet than sugar does. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's see. Runner for Peace says, love this channel. What do you guys think of pros and cons of raw milk, be it fermented or otherwise? Um, so. I can't really I, say because I've never had yeah. it. So I, I do um, know some carnivores who really do are very careful about getting raw milk and find that it um, has a better effect on them. I have had raw cheese and I feel like it was as much of a problem for my asthma as otherwise. Mm. I've never tested specifically only raw dairy and then, uh, you know, tried to see what would happen. Um, so I don't know. I can't say. I just gave up all dairy and, um, you know, and there you go. I mean, I kind yeah. of feel like the arguments that, you know, adults like, just don't need dairy, you know, and dairy is for, for promoting growth and we, that's not good in adults. Growth is not good. In adults. And that's, yeah, that's where I fall on it. Like I have every once in a while, I bought the salami and cheese. It was a hard cheese. Um, I don't eat a ton of cheese. I don't really eat much cheese, period. Um, like that bit that I had today, it was two slices. That was the first cheese I've had in probably over like three weeks or a month or so. Um, Other than that, the only dairy I have is heavy cream. And if you count butter, then that. Um, So like very small amounts of milk protein. Um, Raw dairy is still going to have that. And yeah, I feel like you do. Like when people talk about like the good of raw milk, I feel like what they're really saying is raw milk doesn't bother them so they want to keep consuming it which is fine if you want to do it but yeah we we didn't start domesticating animals until it was only it was before we were domesticating plants but it wasn't way before i don't think we evolved Mm -hmm. domesticating animals to the point where we would have gotten milk from them we killed them and we ate their meat Mm -hmm. so yeah I don't think we evolved to consume milk of any kind in any form, whether raw, fermented, 
pasteurize all that mm. stuff. I don't think that's what we were doing like a million years ago. Yeah. So uh, Johnny G asked if I get a stuffy nose or breakout. Um, well, probably stuffy nose and allergies, but most importantly, mm. my asthma returns and I need my inhaler. <laughs> so that's a big <clears> deal. <throat> yeah, and um, I get the stuffy nose, definitely. Yeah. And Runner for Peace says, I've tried raw goat milk due to its A2 component and easier to digest, but it causes a bit of bloating. Um yeah, there's that argument that, um, so in our country, like there's a, a, a component to the milk protein that you don't see in um, species of, or um, breeds of cow or goat or sheep that come from Europe. And so some mm -hmm. people seem to not react to European dairy, whereas they do to American dairy. Um, and I think, but I feel like that has more to do with the lactose intolerance problem, but it doesn't necessarily speak to the other problems that people have with dairy. So, you know, dairy, like I, once I went keto, it stopped upsetting my stomach. So I didn't have, you know, gas and bloating, but you know, I, I had asthma. So, you know, the way it, I think it caused, um, for me, I think the dairy was, contributing to leaky gut and so contributing to my allergies in that way, but it wasn't causing the traditional symptoms of bloating and, and diarrhea. So. You know. Yeah. And I feel like it's just hard for people to accept, like maybe dairy is just not for humans period, or probably a much easier thing to find out is maybe it's just not for you. That's it's those are hard words to hear. <laughs> those it is. are very I get it. hard I words get to it. hear. And I you like, know, I spent my first like four or five months of carnivore like, oh no, milk is fine. Milk is fine. That's crazy. Milk is fine. No, milk is fine. Like I have no problem with milk. My stomach is fine. My stomach is fine. And then I was like, All right, you know, I just gotta just try it. I just gotta just try it. So I just tried it. And like by day ten. By day 10, I mean, it was like mm -hmm. night and day. So and I I couldn't believe that it would make such a difference. And then, you, you, you know. You like the, the cartoon of the dog um, in the room that's on fire going, this is fine? Yeah. <laughs> this is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's no, fine. no. It's, it's fine. good. It's certainly yeah. not the milk. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I've been saying this all along. So the same thing went for coffee. And when I finally took it out, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah coffee was definitely a problem. And then right. I did the same thing with spices. And when I finally took them out, it was like, oh, yeah, I definitely noticed a difference there, too. So I don't know, you know. I, I totally get that instinct to, um, to push back. Yeah. There you um, go. <laughs> so Katora says that she told somebody that humans aren't supposed to have dairy, and they mentioned the Bible and the land of milk and honey. Like, by the time the Bible was written, and especially by the time like we're reading it, like we are steeped in an agricultural society. Yeah. Um, we're not we can't use those things as evidence of what we should be eating. It's not based well, on Well, first of all, the document it's not based the, on science. The Bible is not a scientific document. It's not even a historical no. document. It is a nope. cultural <laughs> piece of literature. It is important to us and um, you know, it's very meaningful, but it is not, you know, a scientific or a um, you know, or a historical document. And um, I know we're going to get slammed for for that from a lot of people, and I'm sorry. Um, but it, yeah. it's just, you know, we can't use it as science like that. And, you know, and I, I often think of, like, the Daniel diet. People talk about that, and it's like, you know, and using that as evidence for why a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet is really important. But I'm like, you know, the point of the story was that God was able to show, you know, the the miracle of keeping this guy alive on a diet that should have starved him. That was the point of the story. 
So oh. nobody thought that nobody thought that that food was a good idea. It was just like you know, God was like getting that was the way to show His miracle. Oh, and see, I always thought that he was. Um, I never read the story, but I thought the point of the story was that he ate this like horribly malnutrition diet. And so he basically was like extended fasting for a long time. And people, this happens. You fast enough, you will start to see visions. You will have hallucinations. So I thought it was that. I thought it was like, he well, that's to also be true. Closer to God by fasting. I mean, well, absolutely. And that is, as many people use fasting that way, and that's a perfectly, um, you know, reasonable way to do it. But, but that particular story, it wasn't. Um, it, he wasn't using it as a means to get closer to God. But, you know, many of the, you know, Jesus went out to the, the, the desert to fast for 40 days. I mean, many of the, you know, great, um, what do you call them? The great uh, ascetics in prophets. the, uh, right, prophets too, um, were doing a lot of fasting and, and basically cutting themselves off from society so that they would have these, you know, great spiritual experiences. Um, and mm -hmm. fasting can definitely facilitate that. Um, so, you know, and people still continue to use it to that to this day for that purpose. So I'm not saying that one shouldn't fast. I'm just saying like the Daniel diet is, you know, that that's just not an example of why the diet is healthy. It's just an example of how God's miracles work through, you know, <laughs> a person who's being starved, you know. So it's not like, hey, you should do this. You should eat this way. It's healthy. It's just like, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. It's like a lot of things. Um, yeah. It's poorly understood. They don't know the yeah. whole context. And we just make an assumption the same way. Like I didn't understand the context of anything. I was just people were talking about uh, vegetarianism. Like this is me in college. Like vegetarianism yeah. is all the rage with a lot of people. Um, I guess meat's just not good, apparently. So I should just, I'm not going to stop eating meat, but I should eat less. I think less would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Exact opposite of what I should have been doing. But yeah, I didn't know any better. I didn't do any actual research. No, I'm totally with you. I, well, and I did. I read um, that book, um, Diet for a New America, the guy who what's that ice cream shop that has the 31 flavors Baskin Robbins yes so the guy who was the great grandchild of the, the person who started it and was the Baskin Robbins in um, air um, mm. he wrote this uh, book about vegetarianism and how this is a great thing to um, you know to save the planet and, and to turn back some of the um, you know, dangerous and negative things that are happening to, um, you know, to the environment. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I read that and it was like, oh, well, you know, I want to be part of the solution and I want to help. And so, you know, that's kind of where I kind of came in at um, looking at vegetarian diet. And I think that this is probably something we should talk about more this year because I, I definitely see, um, you know, veganism and vegetarianism on the rise in the black community. And I don't, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily a good thing. So I, I really do want people to know that if they can't, they can't make the vegetarian diet work, um, you know, they, that there's a place to, there's, there's another place, there's another alternative. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to say, uh, let's see, Johnny G said, who needs cream if you don't have coffee? <laughs> I think that's an excellent point. Yeah. 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 Um, and that probably, <laughs> that's going to be the reason I end up cutting coffee. It's not because of coffee's effects on me, but it's going to be cream. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Runner for Peace says, thank you. Definitely cutting it out, the dairy. Um, maybe a little butter. So um, the butter thing, you know, for a long time, I didn't have any butter either. And then I started having ghee. And then I would have some butter, um, but mostly I have ghee just in case. And um, I will go through periods of having more, but I tend to um, try to limit how often I have butter as well. 
Because my mm. concern is I don't want to uh, trigger by having, you know, a lot. Um, I don't want to trigger a response to the dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I feel like things are getting out of control or I'm having a lot of, you know, inflammation or anything, then no butter, no dairy. And I don't even have things like, um, like I used to get like the um, cheddar and jalapeno flavored uh, pork rinds. I don't even do that. Like no cheese, none whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah. I do it every once in a while with cheese. Um, yeah. And I find I don't miss it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty quick that that happens. That it's like, I mean, I felt like after two weeks, I was like, wait, why did I, why was I upset about not having cheese? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like even with hamburgers now, I'm like, oh, these kind of taste better. Without well, my cheese. first burgers, I was kind of like, oh, my God, how am I going to eat a burger without cheese? I mean, it's, you know, I don't eat hamburgers. I eat cheeseburgers. Like, mm -hmm. how is this going to happen? And I just put some extra salt on it, and it was like, oh, this is it's fine. Yeah. You know what I find? Cheese hides bad cooking. Oh, God, yeah. If and I sugar. cook a bad hamburger, I want to put cheese on it. If I overcook it, it's got to have cheese. Yeah. yeah. But I felt that way, too, with, like, ketchup. The first time I was going to have a burger without ketchup, I was like, oh, good Lord, please, I, I just help me. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I when I finally stopped doing it, it was like, oh, you know, yeah, it was entirely sugar hides a multitude of ills. Um, and uh, and so that was entirely the problem. Yeah. Like, I was doing... I when I started carnivore, so Aldi has these big bags, these like three pound bags of um, already formed hamburger patties. So mm -hmm. I was buying those like every week or two. And um, sometimes you screw up cooking one, or especially if I try to cook two at a time, I might mess up and overcook them a bit. And cause it's, it's like you you learn the cooking time for one, and then you do two, and then it's all out of whack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like it's a whole another thing to learn. How long does it take to cook two? And they're in yeah. the oven, so I'm not like checking them constantly. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was a slice of American cheese on each one. Sometimes two, if I'm really being indulgent, and ketchup and mayonnaise. And uh -huh. well, yeah, they tasted delicious, but I wasn't tasting the meat as much as I was all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mayo, American cheese, burger, ketchup. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Johnny G says ketones for enlightenment. Yeah. You know what? That is a real thing. And um, just like we were saying, you know, fasting can contribute to, you know, those... Um, some of the, um, you know, the, the uh, you know, more spiritual feelings. Well, ketones are a part of that because, you know, when you're fasting, mm -hmm. you eventually get into ketosis and having, you know, the, the energy and all the good feelings that come from being in ketosis, that's definitely a part of it. So we have that all the time walking around in ketosis. Um, and, you know, that's good. But then adding a little fasting into that is never a bad deal. And, you know, I mean, you know, that's not to say like prayers and whatnot can be seem to be very enhanced by adding some fasting into it. Um, right. So a lot of churches do do like group fasts and stuff like that. And fasting is still, of course, a part of most religions. So and for, you know, and for good reason. So, um you know, it's, it's definitely not something to skip over. Um, right. but yeah. So Katora, for enlightenment. Mm -hmm. hold that over your friend's head. The, the one, uh, throwing the Bible and the land of milk and honey at you when, um, you're trying to tell them that they shouldn't be having dairy or that humans aren't meant to have dairy. You might not even be making a statement about them and what they eat. Just remind them that you're in ketosis all the time. So you're probably closer to God anyway. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> that goes over well. You say that to your friends. Yeah. 
I'm I'm closer to God anyway, so I, I mean <laughs> Your brain is constantly clouded by sugar. Meanwhile, me and God are in communion all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, perhaps this is what it was meant to be. I mean, this is what humans were meant to be like. I mean, instead of walking around in a fog, basically high on sugar, like mm -hmm. we are clear minded, we can actually deal with life and we can commune with divinity whenever we like. I mean, right. yeah, there you go. Um, oh my God, Runner for Peace, awesome, gave us a super chat for $15, thank you so nice. much, and says, um, I may do a trial of eliminating all dairy, including butter, next month to see any benefits. Thank you for taking the time to answer my questions. Awesome, yes, yes. You're um, welcome. Yeah, I always encourage people to um, give it a try, cutting out dairy. You know, there's some things, like we always say here, there are some things that you just can't, um, you can't discuss or figure out or, um, in, you know, um, into it or anything. You just have to mm -hmm. do it. And so, you know, to, to test whether, um, dairy is a problem or coffee is a problem or anything else is a problem. You just have to take it out and try it. And, you know, you don't have to do it forever. You know, you just have to do it for a period of time and see what happens. And as I often like to use Arian as a, um, an example, he took out the coffee, saw that it made a difference, decided it was still worth having the coffee and a little bit of post-nasal drip, so went back to the coffee. So you can know and still decide it's okay. You're, you're okay with whatever response you get. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it may change my mind again later, but uh, most of the time now, the coffee that I have is decaf. So I'm at least not getting that um, oh, wow. effect on my sleep. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. So you would really switch, to, you're almost completely decaf. Oh yeah. I probably have regular coffee maybe once a week now at most. Like. Oh, wow. Okay. And sometimes not even that, yeah. Um, yeah, I like my sleep to be just regular, not being played with. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm thinking too, like, I maybe don't need as much sleep. I, I think from, you know, seven hours might be like what I need. Even six hours seems to be all right. Oh, yeah. Um, I have plenty of days where six is all I need. Mm -hmm. That's a French terrine. Yes. <clears throat> um, I, isn't it? I think French terrine is kind of like, yeah, it's. What does it say? All right. So Wikipedia says it's in traditional French cuisine, a loaf of force meat or aspic similar to a pate that is cooked in a covered pottery mold, also called a terrine in a Van Marie. Um, Y'all lucky I took French, so I actually know how to say these words. Modern terrines, uh, which is probably terrines in French, uh, do not necessarily contain meat or animal fat, but still contain meat-like textures and fat substitutes. Oh, screw that. No, make yours with meat. Wait, meat? I didn't think there were meat-like substances or fat substitutes. Um, I don't think so either, but they're claiming that mushrooms and pureed fruits or vegetables high in pectin are have meat like textures. I don't believe it. I've definitely had meat terrain. Um, and it's it's kind of like pieces of meat suspended in like a non sweet jello, essentially, you know, in, in um, a molded in like a and it's in like a loaf pan that's got like a mold and, you know. So it's kind of like a pate that's sort of suspended in jello, which is, you know, basically like bone broth. It's like super, you know, super collagen-y. So it's like, right. it's solid at room temperature. So or that's what this says aspic is, is the gelatin type thing. And mm -hmm. if you did the, the pate, but it wasn't liver, um, just from lean meat, that would be force meat. Mm -hmm. And apparently yeah. either one can go in a terrine. Yeah. So Johnny G says meat and jelly. That's that's exactly right. 
So I, it may not be very fatty, but, um, but it is meaty. Well, that gelatin, gelatin's not fat, is it? No, no, not at all. It's collagen. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's collagen. So right. it's the stuff that mostly protein, right? Yeah. It's not a full complete protein. Um, but it's the stuff that makes, you know, the bone broth like shake and jiggle right. at cold temperatures. It's and it's what Jello is. That's why it's called Jello. Jello brand gelatin. Mm -hmm. You remember the song? Watch it wiggle, see it jiggle. Fruity Jello, Jello brand gelatin. <laughs> I I don't. I feel like I need to go find that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> GMO says her really bad things about decaf. Um, I mean, it's not great. Oh, it's worse due to the process of extracting the caffeine. Wait a minute. Are y'all really going to kill coffee for me altogether? Yes. There's a lot of processing. Well, you can find fancy kind of um, decaf that don't use all that chemical processing, but... I think there's a little bit of effort that has to go into finding that. I, I don't care enough to do that effort. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I don't. It's probably super expensive too, and that like. I mean, if you're only are, having one cup, maybe it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. Right, but then it also kind of. I guess I, I wasn't thinking about the process to make decaf coffee. Um, I generally don't want to do things that require a lot of processing. And if it turns out that decaf is like, oh, so we take regular coffee, which is already however bad that is, and then we do 20,000 things to it, it goes to a whole industrial process, then I'm going to go, all right, I probably don't want this, period. Oh, it, it definitely goes through a whole industrial process to de to make a decaf. Uh, well, I'm out of decaf and I forgot to buy more. Maybe it's good that I didn't. Good. I do still Excellent. have some regular coffee. Maybe I'll just have that every once in a while and that'll be it. Well, everyone does feel very sorry for you. I see Katoris is ar sorry, Arian. Um, <laughs> Johnny G says, sounded like addiction talk, Arian. <laughs> I agree. A little bit. Damn, did it? Yeah, a little bit. Wait, which part? I mean, why hang on to coffee so much to have decaf when, you know, I mean, there's nothing there and yet you're still having it. So, well, why? see, that's the thing. That's always been the thing for me. I never drank coffee for the caffeine. I never liked the caffeine of the coffee. The only reason I wasn't drinking decaf from the very beginning was because decaf didn't taste as good as actual coffee. I'm the weirdo who add a little cream to it. I like the taste of coffee by itself. I don't mm. do it to like wake up or anything like that. Mm. But well, I'm surprised yeah. you're able to stomach the decaf because it is a lot worse. It is. It definitely does not taste as good, but yeah. If that couture said it, take your own advice. I'll just, I would rather have a small amount of real coffee that's less screwed with than eating or having decaf every day and who knows what chemicals are in there. Yep. Yep. Um, now I see uh, Diane says sounds like a little hoghead cheese to go going back to the terrine. So yeah, I does. never quite understood what hogshead cheese is, um, although I know people who eat it and like it. So I think it has a, a scary sounding name, but um, could be just fine to eat. Um, as far general. as I can tell, it's basically uh -huh. another meat jello. Okay. Um, Johnny G says you can put potted meats, liver, and hard cheese in it. Um, so why is it called ho hogshead cheese if it just has meat in it? 
That's a good question. That's what I it's didn't understand. Uh, all recipes says it's a wonderful spicy appetizer made of pork roast that is served great with crackers. I'm looking at the ingredients, there's pork shoulder. I'm not seeing anything about a hog head. Maybe they used to put it in the head of a hog. I don't know. Why is it called that? Yeah. Um, John A.G. says, I bet if you traded coffee for chocolate, you'd get the same triggers. That's for you, Arian. Um, triggers like what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand the statement. I'm not sure. So Wait, does, doesn't chocolate have caffeine. doesn't chocolate have caffeine in it? Yeah. Yeah, so you Would could I have a little have... chocolate and no coffee. but that would mm. cause its own problems. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I think that you're, like you're better chocolate. off just um, letting it go. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to read one thing about how decaf is made and then go, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Or how coffee is harvested and you know, the conditions that people are working in. Um, that's pretty awful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that like all the, the fact that there are so many people selling um, basically cruelty free coffee means that <laughs> all the other coffee is horrible and the cruelty free is probably just less awful, but not actually good. Yep. So, yeah, you know, actually, when I learned about cashews and the way that um, they are harvested and how devastating that is for the women who, who do, you know, who um, crack them open and deal with them, I was just like, man, I can't ever eat cashews again. I mean, it, you know, the acids in the nuts burn their hands black and oh, their yeah. hands are black. And some of them lose like their fingertips and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, all this. So I can go get, you know, a jar of cashews at Dwayne Reed. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, yeah. I can't believe for a nut that people love that, that, you know, the consumption of is rising and rising that, you know, these companies have not made an effort to um, find a way to mechanize this so that, you know, I mean, it's taking a job away, but so that, you know, women aren't sitting around in a circle on the floor with blackened hands. Oh, I, you know, oh, it was awful. I just, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember what country that was? India. Right. Okay. So that was India. And then um, I learned the same, well, not the same, but a similar thing about, uh, um, what was it? Oh, almonds like the amount of water that goes into like a pound of almonds or a gallon of almond milk to mm -hmm. actually make the almonds that go into that is like you cannot think that you are helping the environment if you're um eating anything almond base yeah yeah i know and then you know the vegans say that you know the cows are using up all this water it's like are you kidding and right. now you have your cashew milk and your cashew salad dressing for your raw, you know, vegan meal. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in the time you were telling that little story, I skimmed through two different ways that people make decaf coffee. And it's uh, chemicals that I have not heard of and I don't want to be eating. I think that's it for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, we should probably wrap up. We have had a wonderful conversation. We have traversed all around the topic. I appreciate all of you who have stuck in here and who have, you know, listened and had a delightful conversation with us and have enjoyed the conversation. 
Um, I really had a good time tonight. Uh, Arian, you kept me in stitches. You really did. As did all (laughs) of you. Johnny G, too. Johnny G is just coming with the jokes, one after the other. Um, Right. So, yeah, I appreciate that. And Running for Peace, I totally appreciate the super chat. Diane, so glad that um, you are here and that uh, I hope you come back. Saturday, don't forget, we're doing the cooking show with Deborah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to um, figure out a setup. And so, you know, you're going to see my kitchen and you'll see, you know, how I cook. So that'll be kind of cool. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. All right, guys. So I will see you on Saturday and then uh, next week. So there will be something. um, We'll have some kind of premiere on Tuesday, and then we'll do the live stream again on Thursday. So looking forward to it. Sounds good. See you guys then. All right. Good night. Good night.